So let's get started with setting up Swarm in our production environment. And like I said before, Docker Swarm actually gets shipped with Docker. So when you install Docker, you already have Docker Swarm at your disposal. The only problem is it's disabled by default. If you do a Docker info, it's going to let you know whether Swarm is uh, enabled or not. And we can see here Swarm is set to inactive. So to enable Swarm, all we have to do is Docker Swarm init. That's going to initialize Swarm. And we're going to get an error. And it's basically saying that, you know, we've got multiple IP addresses. We have to tell what IP address we want to use for Swarm. So it looks like DigitalOcean gives us two IP addresses, uh, one on Ethernet 0, one on Ethernet 1. Let's just grab the one with the public facing IP. And then we just need to pass that into the advertise dash ADDR flag. So let me copy my public IP. All right, and so now it says Swarm is initialized and uh, it defaults us into being a manager. And keep in mind when you're a manager, you're also a worker by default. And if we wanted to add more nodes into the Swarm, uh, the it provides us two commands. So this command is going to allow us to add a new node into our Swarm as a worker node. And then this command down here is going to give us, uh, is going to allow us to add a new node into the Swarm as a manager node. Um, but like I said, we're going to stick with just one node for now, just to keep things simple. And uh, you'll see that, you know, Docker Swarm is very similar to just doing regular Docker commands like Docker run, uh, Docker create, and things like that. So if I do a Docker uh, dash dash help, all right, you'll see all of the commands that we have. So we can do Docker create, which is going to create a container. Uh, we can do Docker um, RM to delete a container. Uh, you can do Docker update to update the configuration for a container. Uh, you got Docker stop, which is going to stop a container. Well, Docker Swarm isn't really any different, right? Except instead of working with containers, it works with services. And a service, remember, is pretty much just a container. Uh, so you'll see that there's a lot of similarity between Docker containers, uh, just running individual Docker containers, and running um, Swarm services. So if I do a Docker service so this is how you get access to all of the swarm related commands and i just do dash dash help you'll see the options we have so we have docker service create right very similar to a docker create which creates a container we have uh, ls which is going to list out all the services we can delete a service and then a lot of the orchestration takes place with the rollback so you can you know revert changes you can scale up the number of instances for a service and then we can update specific details about a service so I just really wanted to highlight that, you know, there's nothing really that much different between Docker Swarm and just running regular Docker commands. And so we can do all the things we want to do by just running Docker service commands. However, that's a little tedious, just like running all of the Docker run commands. It's hard to remember all of the necessary flags and things like that. So if you remember or you recall, when we wanted to kind of automate all of our Docker run commands, we just put all of our Docker run configurations into a compose file. And the nice part about Docker Swarm is that we can do the same exact thing. We can put all of our configurations within a compose file. And what's even nicer is that we get to use all of the, we can use our compose files that we already have. So uh, we can use everything that we have already pre-configured and we could just add in a few extra fields that are Swarm related. So let's pull up the documentation to see the specific Swarm related configs. Uh, so if you go to the reference section uh, under um, Docker Compose, and just search for the deploy section. This is going to give us a lot of the options that are specific to Docker Swarm. Uh, it's going to give us all the information that we need. And so skip endpoint mode, that doesn't matter. Labels doesn't matter. Placement doesn't matter. Uh, here's the first flag or option that we can add to our compose file that's a little bit interesting, which is replicas. So here, the replicas defines how many instances of a specific service you want to run. So if I set uh, replicas to six, like in this example for my node app service, it's going to give us six containers. So as our uh, applic application demand grows, we can just spin up more and more containers by increasing the number of replicas, All right? Uh, there's a resources section where we can kind of constrain the resources that each uh, you know, container can use. We're not going to do much uh, regard with regarding that. 
Uh, restart policy. This is going to determine, you know, when and how we restart container. You know, if it crashes, should we restart it? And if so, if so, how long should we wait? So let's add restart policy as well as replicas uh, to our configuration. So under our prod file, because we only want to run compose, sorry, we only want to run swarm within our prod environment. We don't actually want to run it in our development environment because in our development environment, we can just use Docker compose. That's perfectly okay. So let's go to our prod under node app. We'll just add a section called deploy. And then let's add in, well, first of all, let's add replicas. And let's set it to eight. And then for our restart policy, we can add a condition of any. So we're going to restart it for any reason it goes down. And we can set a delay um, between each restart attempt, but I don't really care about that. Uh, now, this is where things get interesting. Rollback config and update config. Uh, so let's go to the update config section. This is kind of what we're most interested in because we're trying to create a way to update our application without experiencing any loss. Uh, and so this section just tells you, you know, how do we configure how the service should be updated. So useful for configuring and rolling updates. So this is exactly what we need. This is kind of the real reason we wanted to go to Docker Swarm. So here we have this flag called parallelism. So this just sets the number of containers to update at a time. So if you have eight containers and we got to update the image of all eight, what it's going to do is if we set parallelism to two, it's going to update two containers at a time. So, you know, we can run two. Uh, and then if it, at once those two are up, we'll then move on to the next two containers and then the next two. So, uh, you know, when two containers go down, the other six just pick up the slack until it comes back online. The delay is a time to wait between updating a group of containers. Uh, then we have a failure action. So what should we do if an update fails? We can either continue, rollback, pause. And the default looks like it's pause. Uh, maybe we want to do rollback if it fails so that it automatically rolls back for us. And then you can also set the order. So there's a few other properties, but let's just set up parallelism and delay for now. We're going to set that to two and we'll set the delay to be 15 seconds. And then there's a few other flags that you can probably search for, but that's all we really need for Docker, um, for Docker swarm. Uh, you can see how easy it is to integrate it into your Docker compose workflow. We just had to add a couple of properties and we're good to go. So we made a few changes. Uh, to our Docker Compose file. So we have to actually push these changes to our production server. So we have to do a, a commit in Git and then do a Git push. So I'm going to do a Git add. And then we'll do a Git commit. And then we'll do a Git push. All right, then in our production server, I'm going to do a Git pull. And so now we have the updated uh, Docker compose file. And so now let's actually deploy it. So first of all, um, if we do a Docker PS, it looks like we still have all of our containers that we deployed using Docker compose. So let's, let me see if I can find that Docker compose command right here up. We'll just change that to down so we can delete everything. All right, so everything's down. So now to deploy uh, you know, our application using Docker Swarm, there's a command called Docker and then stack. So Docker stack is how we actually use that. And let's do the dash dash help and see the options we have. And there's something called deploy. So that's probably what we want. So let's do that. And let's see what options we have. Not many options. Uh, but there is this compose file, so we have to pass in the name of the compose file. And so just like we did when we did Docker Compose, we have to pass in both of our compose files. Um, but instead of using dash F, we have to use dash C in this case. And then let's do a dash dash help again. 
And uh, we want to do a... Uh, that's about it, actually. So we have to... Well, actually, we have to give it a stack name. So a stack name is just a name of your application, right? So when we create this stack, which is, I guess, think of it as like a, all of your services bundled together, what do you want to give it? A, what do you want to name it as? I'm just going to call it my app. So let's deploy that. And so you can see it's creating all of our services. So it actually creates a network just like Docker Compose. And then it's going to create our four different services. And some Docker commands or some Docker Swarm related commands, you can do a Docker node LS. This is going to list out all of the nodes within our Docker Swarm. And so you can see here, this is this specific node. We only have one node in this case. Uh, if you do Docker stack LS, it's going to list out all of your stacks. We just have one stack called my app. If we do a Docker stack, and then let's do dash dash help. We can list out all the services in a stack. So let's do Docker stack uh, and then services, and then we call my app. And it's going to list out the four different services. So you can see the different uh, images. This is the equivalent of doing just a, like a Docker PS, right? So we see, um, you know, the, the container name or the container ID, the name it's given, how many times it's replicated. So we only have one Mongo container and then what image it's using. And if you take a look at our node app container, we have eight of them. So we have eight individual containers for that. And we can verify that by doing a Docker PS. And you can see most of these are node app containers, eight of them specifically. If you want to list out all of the services um, across all stacks, you could do Docker service LS. Uh, however, keep in mind, we only have one stack. So we see the same exact output as we saw before. All right now we can also list out tasks, right? And I, I guess I didn't really go over a task, but uh, when it comes to creating a new service, updating a service, deleting a service, Docker Swarm generates a task, and then it pushes that task out to a worker node so that the worker then can actually perform that task. So if I do a Docker service, sorry, a Docker stack, PS, and then we let's do dash dash help. And then we pass in the stack name, it looks like. So Docker PS. And so this is going to list out all of the tasks for my stack. So it's going to be called my app. And you can see all of the tasks that it created. All right. And so you can see a task got generated for each one of these containers. So it looks like it's to provision uh, all of our containers. 